Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I read in February. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is Record of a Spaceborn View by Becky Chambers. This is the third book in the Wayfarer series. If you have been on this channel for a while, then you already know that I was rereading this series as part of the read-along hosted by the Interstellar Book Club. So I was just reading these in preparation of the release of the final book. I'm not entirely sure how to describe this book. It's essentially mostly focused on this particular spaceship and the humans living in it. And essentially a similar spaceship, but not theirs, blows up. And so we basically follow how everyone feels after that massive loss of life from that other similar spaceship. So I rated this book four stars. I have to say it's my least favorite in this series. For the most part, it's because I feel like it takes too long to get you into the story. I think this was part of our conversation in the book club that because this third book comes followed after it comes after this se the second book which is mostly focused on very few characters and this one kind of expands again into focusing on more characters it feels a, a little bit disjointed when you start the story the characters feel more separate they're not really that close to one another so you're just following these individual stories and you're kind of like why do I care about these people? How are these people related? How do their stories intersect? And that takes a considerable time and popping up. You don't really know how they all come together until you're well within the story. And so as a reread, I was just more frustrated with my reading experience. The first time I read it, I was in love with it. I thought it was fantastic. I'm someone who really enjoys the way that Becky Chambers can make the mundane interesting, can make it compelling. And so this book especially has even less of a plot than the first and second book. So it's very, very, very heavy on the character work. So it's definitely not one for people who are looking for something a little bit more intense or who are hoping that the series will get more <laughs> intense as it goes on in terms of like action. So I had a mixed experience. At the end of the day, I still really enjoyed the characters. I still felt attached to them. I still liked all the things that Becky Chambers was exploring, but I was just not as charmed by it as I was the first time around. And if I had taken better notes of my reading experience in February, I might have been able to explain it to y'all a little bit better. But essentially it boils down to the fact that the main point that makes these characters come together, I would have preferred for that to have happened sooner. If it hadn't happened sooner, then I would have preferred for the book to be longer so that we get more of a sense of these characters being cohesive together. So that is essentially what it all boils down to. The next book I'm going to be talking about is Work For It by Talia Hibbert. As y'all know, I love Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert is bae. Talia Hibbert is an icon. So of course I'm talking about her again in a video. <laughs> so in this book we are essentially following Olu who is depressed, isn't really life isn't working out that well for him he just got out of a really bad relationship and he kind of feels like an alien and so he ends up deciding to go to the countryside to kind of relax get more in touch with himself and maybe feel better <laughs> you know and so he ends up meeting griff who works at this what is it? I'm not entirely sure at this point what it is, but I know that one of the major things is like this flower festival. So he's very much preparing for that flower festival. And so Alu and Griff cross paths and it's the romance that develops between the two of them. So I rated this four stars. As always, Talia Hibbert never fails me never lets me down. She is the one author I can trust. Uh, 
<laughs> I mean in terms of romance because obviously I have multiple authors I really love but when it comes to romance I just really like the romances that Talia Hibbert writes so in this one one of the things that I was kind of laughing as I was listening to the audiobook is that I thought about Read with Cindy because Read with Cindy is always talking about how books don't have ugly girl representation and so okay maybe this one doesn't have ugly girl <laughs> representation but one of the major things in this book is how everyone describes Griff as ugly. Everyone is like he's not really attractive and Olu himself is kind of like yeah he's kind of ugly but like interesting looking so I'm still intrigued I'm still the intrigue is still there so that was just something that I found amusing while I was reading obviously and at the end of the day Olu ends up falling in love with Griff and so starts seeing the beauty in him and part of the whole thing is also kind of sticking it to the man which is ironic in this book but anyway it's kind of about Griff reclaiming that he doesn't have to accept the way others view him like regardless of like standard beauty things he doesn't have to accept the way other people want him to think of himself want him to view himself because another part of this that is very big for Griff is that he doesn't have a lot of confidence he doesn't really feel like he has thoughts worth listening to essentially he doesn't think that he's all that smart he doesn't think that he's special in any way basically so part of the story is Olu helping him figure out that hey you have really good ideas and a lot of what's helping this town is the flower festival you help hold together and that you always bring new ideas to so like what are you talking about that you're not smart so i really 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 love that and then with olu since he has his depression a lot of the narrative is about him learning that he is deserving of love that he is not work okay like he he shouldn't feel like he's imposing on people if he shows them vulnerability, if he shows them how much he's truly struggling and how much he needs support. He doesn't always have to be the strong one for, ev for everyone else. He can sometimes be vulnerable and have others be strong for him. So truly, really, 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 really like the characters. I really enjoyed it. I'm hoping for a sapphic a sapphic Talia Hibbert one day I know she will give it to me one day <laughs> I'm pretty confident she has one now in contract but it might still take a while to come out so I'm like low-key suffering but whatever <laughs> but the point here is that I really really enjoyed this romance and of course I would recommend it but I would always recommend Talia Hibbert the next book I'm going to be talking about is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. So in this book we follow Grace who has recently finished her PhD in astronomy and kind of feels aimless. She pushed so hard to get this degree. She started going on job interviews and started experiencing various microaggressions in those interviews alone and so she kind of feels like the field doesn't want her, the field is not welcoming to her and she doesn't know what to do. So she decides to go on a trip to Las Vegas with her friends and while she is there she ends up marrying this woman called Yuki and so Yuki leaves behind a card saying like hey if you want to talk again just hit me up essentially and so the two of them first reconnect through Yuki's podcast because Grace starts listening to it and eventually Grace decides to start to get to know this woman better. So part of it is about the romance between Grace and Yuki and part of it is about Grace dealing with her mental illness, her dealing with her sense of aimlessness with work and all of that stuff. So I rated this four stars. I have to say that it took me a minute to get into the story. It took me about 70 pages to feel truly immersed in it but overall I really 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 loved it. I thought it was spectacular. 
First of all, it had very serious in-depth conversations about what it's like to live with mental illness. It's not trying to sugarcoat it. It's not trying to only show like the quirky sides of it or anything like that or like how does that make you stronger? Like none of that nonsense. It's very much focused on how do you cope with your mental illness? How do you properly take care of yourself? And how does your mental illness sometimes ne negatively impact you, impact the ones around you and things like that. So that was top notch quality. And then the romance was also spectacular. Grace and Yuki were adorable. There was so much sapphic yearning here that it was just a work of art just a work of art. Some of the quotes here, I was like, thank you. Thank you. This is what I want. This is the food I want. Just so much yearning. And then I also liked the friendship dynamics. Grace has two friends that she's very, very close to. And so all of their interactions together were just fascinating to me. And I was so committed to her friendship because I just like that representation of very strong friendship bonds because I feel like a lot of books try but they don't always succeed at showing just how deep and meaningful friendships can be to to people and as someone who is very close with her friends I just love reading books that feature that and then finally I really like the parent-child dynamics in this book Grace has very complicated relationships with both her mother and her father and so we get to explore that in this book. So really really appreciated that her mom was kind of like an absentee mom. Her dad was very strict with very high expectations and so she's trying to rebuild these relationships with her parents in a healthier way. I think I said that was my final note but my final note is actually that I loved that this included conversations about how difficult it is for black people in STEM, how difficult it is for them to feel accepted, have to deal with microaggressions, have to deal with essentially a hostile work environment and feel alone because there's so few people, especially black people, in STEM. Of course there are and that's kind of the whole, the whole point is that it's challenging and so really 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 appreciated that this book highlighted that so overall i would definitely recommend picking this book up the last book i'm going to be talking about is pink slip by katrina jackson in this book novella i can't remember how long it is we essentially follow this secretary of two spies and the romance that develops between the three of them like it's not that deep it's literally about these spies who are married and how they're both in love with their secretary and eventually they all get together that's that's the point that that's the story <laughs> i rated this book 3.5 stars overall it was a very short fun read i really enjoyed it i definitely definitely had so much fun reading it it was cheesy because all the spy stuff was very cheesy, very tropey, but I ate it up entirely. It was magnifique. And the romance also was spectacular. All of these characters were so thirsty for one another, like so thirsty, horny 100% of the time. And I was just like, spectacular. We love to see it. If I have one complaint about that element is that I've read Katrina Jackson before and I think her steamy scenes have been steamier and so in this one the most steamy part was the before like when they're leading up to it it's very steamy but then it kind of just plateaus and it's just kind of fine. So that would be my major complaint. I forgot I had Honey Girl still here. We're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. But essentially that's everything I have to say about Pink Slip. Since it's such a short read, it's not like I have super in-depth thoughts about it. So I would still recommend it if that's what you're looking for. If, if you're looking for a book with a polyamorous relationship, if you're into cheesy spy shit, just pick it up. 
just pick it up. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will have the links to that down below in the description. But for now, see you next time.